Hi. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, yeah, sure. last time, uh, we okay, I'll just say we've been a big supporter of the film Spine of Night. And uh... <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Me too. I wanted to support that. It was such a, a crazy project. I was like, and it had that 70s sensibility that I grew up with. Absolutely. Um, and Bakshi so kind I of just rotoscoping. Had, <laughs> I just had to jump on that, man, okay. just to support them. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this is a very different film. Tell me tell me about yeah. uh, Never Look Away and uh and Margaret Moth. Yeah, I will say it's not so different in that we do use that really old technology with diorama where it, you know we we can have archive of uh her experiences behind the camera and more. Um but it's very you can't get anything of her life when the camera wasn't rolling. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we had to create diorama and um, uh, to help tell the story and to take the audience on a little bit of a journey into a compressed nightmarish world. So um, anyway, that's a little bit off topic because uh, you just reminded me with the um, Harry Housen. <laughs> absolutely i mean I, I i literally just saw the film a couple minutes ago and uh i'm uh still kind of tense after watching it, especially near the end there um what my film yes full spine of night oh, oh, but, uh, no, oh good about... why are you tense wait you're <laughs> tense tell me why you're tense uh well you know it's it's this thing of you know i watch a lot of movies and um and uh, sorry, I uh, meant to get my video on. I, I watch a lot of movies and a lot of the action is movie action while all the action in your movie is real. Uh, and yeah. that's that's the thing that struck me most is like, you know, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to walk, get up, brush off and walk away. But here you're looking at, uh, at real war footage and, and we're, you know, this is stuff we're seeing in the news even today. And that's uh, yes, that's the thing about Margaret that yes. uh, you know that really stuck out to me, and and why this is such an important film. Uh, oh, good, thank you. That's lovely. I love hearing those words. <laughs> well, uh, let me see. There, there, there's this feeling I got while watching the film that uh, that you know, I, I'm grateful that Margaret exists. Yet uh, I I never want to be her <laughs> in the sense of perfect you know, yeah she's she's the uh I, I i liken her to indiana jones and uh, laura croft kind of the uh the hunter <laughs> uh what, what was what was the thing that drew you to this film and to her her life story I, can i just go back and say that it's perfect that nobody's going to want to be like margaret mm -hmm. but i think she's really inspirational and in that you go if she achieved so much when so much was taken away from her, who am I not to reach that little bit higher and harder for the thing that I dreamed of doing for myself? So like that you want to go off and be more of yourself because nobody's come and shot you in the face. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. what's our excuse? So um, I hope she is inspirational on, on some level. Um, what drew me to it? I just love bad bitches, and she's Margaret's the worst. <laughs> she's the best and the worst. She's got, um, she's got a lot of demons, but they never claimed her. They never owned her. She, um, you know, until death finally came for her, uh, she dominated her senses. She dominated every situation. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, this is your first uh, directorial uh, project, directorial debut. Um, mm. What brought you to the project and uh, why, why did you choose this as your first? I just, you know what? I didn't choose it. It chose me. Like I got this email saying, hey, um, I'm the uh, executor of Margaret's estate. Do you want to make a movie about her film? And I got the feeling that it had been sent out to like a hundred other people. And I read it and, and remembered Margaret. I was going back through my memory banks, my little old Rolodex. And um, and I wrote straight back, like literally within 90 seconds of reading the email, I wrote back and said and just stomped my my um my thumbprint, my fingerprint, my footprint all over it. Like I, I said, yes, I will find the money. I will do it. And um, we talked and I guess 
they were convinced I was the right person. And here we are, not even two years later. Like it's happened mm -hmm. so quick. But honestly, Margaret chose me. Yeah. So That's when you feel. so when you got greenlit to do this, uh what what were the first steps? What 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 did you well, what no, was going before, in your brain is that I need to do this first? With, yeah, well, a lot of people had already died, including Margaret herself. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid that we wouldn't get financing this year. Maybe not. I wouldn't get this made for 10 years. And COVID hit. Like there's a worldwide pandemic. And I'm scared that I'm going to lose the few people that are left that remember her firsthand. And they might have photographs or, or whatever. And so I, because we hadn't yet gotten a funding, I went off on my own. I grabbed some kid from... LA and um she had to do all the like the DOP and set up the camera and all the transfers like I was so ignorant of what the crew needed to be so we picked up a sound guy in each place and she and I went around and got preliminary interviews with mm -hmm. um some of these people who are very precious and um indeed uh at least one of them is is no longer alive um not due to COVID, but to other things. But uh, yeah, it was just, it had to happen and it had to happen now. Then we did, in fact, get funding and we were able to go back and film things properly. But a lot of those, um, those, that first, those first interviews with my friend Jenna, mm -hmm. um, a girl called Jenna Boss, and I did, made it into the final cut. So I'm really grateful because they were terrific. Yeah, and the, and the other thing that struck out was the fact that I, I think it, it's it sounded like you didn't have problems getting interviews from from like Christiane Amanpour and uh, and people who knew her that that they just loved her so much that they wanted to talk about her. Yeah, which is amazing. But I, I think there's such a, a um, fealty among the people in that field. They really love and respect one another. It's not just Margaret; all of them. They take care of one another. And certainly at that time, I know television and television news has changed a great deal since 1989. But um, there was a lot of lot of love and a lot of um, a lot of loyalty shown to Margaret through her many, many, she went through 25 operations, more than 25, mm -hmm. to fix her her injuries after she was shot. Um and they just stuck by her, all of them. So yeah, lots of love from her friends. And and a lot of them never, ever got over her. Like her lovers, a lot of them never got over her. Yeah. I mean, that was uh, the one, the her first lover was... Uh, Jeff. I, yeah. yeah, he, he was so, uh, you know, to hear him talk about the fact that uh, where he was in his life when, when she was shot and... Uh, and to kind of just really come to grips with the fact that he he really wasn't there for her and that kind of yeah. his demons had kept him back to me that's those are things i wish people would be much more honest about when they talk talk about their lives yeah. back at their lives jeff jeff was absolute gold he was one of the first people that i talked to and he was a great friend to me and unfortunately he passed away right just before christmas and um he never got to see the film so i'm really like i'm I feel it now. I'm really going to miss having him there. I was hoping he would come to Sundance, but um, unfortunately, it's... but in a way it didn't matter because he was there with me. We talked all the time. I think I was actually the last person to talk to him. Okay. So from a documentary standpoint, I, I, I want to get into the, uh, the discussions behind the dioramas you used. Uh, you know, we have a lot of up and coming filmmakers and I thought it was a very unique, a uh, way to tell certain parts of stories that obviously you couldn't have on camera. What were the discussions about going that direction and then ex actually executing that, executing it? Well, first we're talking about, wow, can we go to Sarajevo? And then you're looking at it on Google Earth going, it doesn't look anything like it did. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's completely rebuilt and it's summer and it's, you know, all this stuff. Um, so that wouldn't help even if we had twice the budget to go to Sarajevo or um, Lebanon or wherever. We wanted to have a few locations and we just couldn't afford it. So everything comes down to budget. And I think one of the things that I learned is that often style is about what you can't have because you can't afford it. <laughs> so that winnows out certain 
certain things and and it's a it's actually a strength in the end because it gives you a signature just like Hitchcock's early films were you know you didn't get to see the whole world he didn't even build the whole world it was only it was always kept within a, a, a like rear window for example this is the most salient example um within a very defined parameter you never get out of that um apartment yeah. complex right you never get out of it and um so the diorama we couldn't afford to have backgrounds for example we could only afford a curtain and we were like should it be green screen we're like we can't afford cgi okay um black curtains <laughs> are going to be awesome because we'll light it for day with this lovely apricot light in the face and we can only afford two colors of plastic for the figurines so we chose gray and green because none of these things want to go together you it will give the audience this really uncanny valley feeling because it's lit for day but the sky is black and the people are all this unnatural color and then we're going to make the world make it even more unworldly by sound designing it so that you feel yeah. kind of underwater and it's pressured and it gives the audience this somatic experience of entering a almost like an underwater world so um this the ex physical experience of the audience is always on my mind whether it's from um what people are saying the ideas they're conveying or the images that we're choosing everything's to link to everything else to take the audience on a somatic experience that's um i think that's what entertainment is yeah and um it's very much top of mind for me well it was a very dramatic way to bring context to those those situations those events uh yeah. even even the uh the rocket trails uh the model bro <laughs> i mean i'm like oh my gosh this is this i mean it stands out in the film <laughs> and uh, and you know, you, I, know. I believe you got that uh, that emotional and that visceral impact with, with those models and it was incredible somebody was telling me was like no don't do dacron plumes um, <laughs> just cgi it later and and i turned to ben milson the designer and i and we're like we love them put them in <laughs> like, no, i'm not listening to that guy yeah. And they were the magic because they give you they it's a still life, but it has life in it, right? Because mm -hmm. the idea of smoke is um anyway, it's just bloody beautiful. Yeah. I mean um, I miss I miss practical. That's I'll just I know, I I'm I'm all about that too. My favorite movie is uh uh Coppola's uh Dracula, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For that library of awesome practical effects, that's yeah. everything. Uh, well, even the, the first three Indiana Jones, uh, speak of that again. Um, so, yeah, let me ask you the, now, then just now that the film is done, what is what is it that you hope people walk away with, with uh, Never Look Away? I want them to walk away and, go and, and reach higher for that thing that they thought was just outside their reach because you know, she achieved so much. Mm hmm when so much has been taken away from it, that, that you you too can um, be more of yourself. And um, and the other thing that I realized only in the, the recent days, actually, that the lesson that I've learned through this is to put away emotional thinking and do something useful to the world. Mm -hmm. So stop ranting, stop the umbrage. There's so much to get angry about um, that if you care about uh instead of taking sides in 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 politics or what's going on in the world go out and do something of practical benefit give us some support to someone who's you know a, a refugee an immigrant who's who's um who is trying to get into college you know help them understand their syllabus or buy them a textbook or something like do something and that stops you being stuck on this hamster wheel of hatred and division and otherism mm. and unkindness um it, it sets you free Absolutely. and makes your and makes your um, community better safer all right well thank you very much uh lucy for uh your film never look away and congratulations Pleasure. on sundance thanks i can't <laughs> believe it amazing <laughs> thanks alan you're welcome cheerio